Jordan Peterson is always going to be my first. All right, pick. we should do this. This, yes. is really, this isn't going to impact uh, world politics at all, but it is sort of uh, fascinating to watch this guy who is considered a self-help guru who needs, who's, who appears to be. He needs a lot of help. In a lot of self-help. Um, he is. Um, Speaking with Andy No. Interviewing uh, Andy No, oh who is a. Um, right-wing propagandist disguised as a journalist wow um you know i'm not uh not that i have a problem necessarily with uh propagandists just gotta own um, it but you gotta own it and I he's mean. been known to inspire many right-wingers in like vin vigilante uh justice type situations against whoever they they perceive <clears throat> to be antifa a lot of violent right-wingers are fans of andy Nell. oh yeah um, and doxes them Jordan too. Peterson is um, trying to understand the mentality of uh, Antifa. Like, who are these people? Yeah, just to preface this a little bit, no ask for Jordan Peterson's professional uh, 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 psychological take on this and what he gets in return is something different. <laughs> oh, and we should also tell you that. Um, any psychologist would be like, oh, well, I can't really actually assess the the, yeah, that would uh, the collective psychology of a bunch of people who are not even a part of an organized uh, group who are. I can tell you, I can characterize it for you guys. Uh, Antifa or Antifa, they are against fascists. There you go. I wanted to ask you about the based on your 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 knowledge, your background, your clinical experience. What, clinical what is experience. it? psychology of this mob violence when i see it it it, it uh, like i i don't even recognize some of these it seems they seem animalistic is what i mean um in no they're the worse August, than animals they're worse than animals because animals they just kill to eat you know human That's, beings they have a twist in them that makes them far worse than animals when they really get going well i think it's i think you really want to know what i think I think it's revenge yes. against God for the crime of being. What? That's really what I think. <laughs> uh, Candy's I mean, like, I mean, what? I mean, like Andy knows, like, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, I mean, first off. Wait, he's it, well, there's like five seconds left and he starts crying. We just got to get to that, right? Oh, all right, we'll go back, go back and we'll start it over. I just want to say, like, you know, people should, should just know, like, he's saying these people are worse than animals. Yeah. They're worse than animals. Well, he says these them. people, but then he says people in general because they have a weird twist about them that makes them when do they things. kill. Yeah, when they kill. Yeah, because they don't eat the carcasses of the people that they kill. Now, the killing, of course, is also hypothetical. That hasn't happened. But, no. Yeah. Um, unless they're furries, furbies, furbies, furries, furries. I don't know. Furries. furries have taken any bodies yet either. Yeah. Not. Not. They yet. just defecate. All right. Take it from the beginning. Even recognize some of these. It seem they seem animalistic, is what I mean. Um, in no, they're the worse animal than August. animals. They're worse than animals because animals they just kill to eat. You know, human beings they have a twist in them that makes them far worse than animals when they really get going. Well, I think it's. I think you really want to know what I think. I think it's revenge yes. against God for the crime of being. <laughs> That's really what I think. It's Cain. And Cain and Abel. It's like, oh, Abel's your Abel's your guy. Hey, God, how about if I take him out in the field and beat him to death? How do you feel about that? All my sacrifices went unrewarded. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is at the bottom of the hell of things. <laughs> oh, my God. He is having a breakdown. I mean, so like, I said this on Twitter. I said, I said, this is indistinguishable from Pat Robertson, right? This is indistinguishable. But I really, what I meant to no say church. is it's indistinguishable from like evangelicals in this country in the way that, you know, he phrases these things. But honestly, someone pointed out to me, it's more like Glenn Beck because he's getting weirdly emotional about yeah. it too and crying out of nowhere. That's what he's, that's, he's, this like intellectual who is going to change the way young white men uh, approach their lives. It's just basically Glenn Beck, but less emotionally stable. <laughs> yeah. The, the interesting thing is what sets him off. 
And it, it seems like when it's the words when he says like his sacrifices go unrewarded. <laughs> And and on some level, it's it's it, there's some measure of like enormous self pity that is associated oh, there. It's, it's, it's yeah. the crime. Peterson being. Peterson does not believe that he has been recognized. I mean, it's the same with Beck. On some level, Beck has a um, um, a, a messiah complex too, and he feels like he's the only one who can see what's happening to the country. But there's this Peterson has a he is not being rewarded for the slings and arrows that I have taken in the name of making sure that I have the right to misgender someone. <laughs> <laughs> for the meat diet. There's this thing in the New York Post today, God forbid me for writing, you know, reading the New York Post, but it's about a new form of basically like um, being a sociopath and it's empathetic. It's like dark empathy where someone is able to feel or, you know, exhibit some form of empathy, but like for their sociopathic tendencies. And I mm. feel like this is it. This is it. Go look that article up if you can find it. What do you mean? They That's feel empathy it. for, for Whatever. other people's sociopathic? Or they project it on, or they project their sociopathy onto others. And then like they bask in their, uh, their own immiseration or their own misery and, and say, Oh, I understand how other people that feel that way. That's kind of it. Yeah. It's it's like a manipulative tool to get people to trust you. Have you ever seen those yeah. cult leaders who they're so into their own cult? Like you're part of our story that we're working on in Puerto Rico. There's a guy there, Brock Pierce. I've seen him in the act and, and his, his people who have even turned on him are like, he, I don't know if he's wrong. It's just the people around. I'm like, no, he's wrong. But they're so good at emoting some feeling and maybe even buying into it themselves yeah. that it gets people to trust them. But ultimately, it's just about using that to build their empire of bullshit. Yeah, yeah it's it's really good at speaking to damaged people. And it's always like the Jordan Peterson, the lessons are always like just trite right wing points. Like it's talking about the Tower of Babel. It's like, don't do multiculturalism. It's bad. And he's talking about like uh, Paradise Lost. And it's like, don't do political activity or it'd be a hell of your own making. And it's always this right wing point. But he his his. His references are like scholarly, so well. And and he also he he uh, feels he can or uh, he projects it onto his audience that he's tapping into some sort of ancient mysticism in oh, the yeah. way that he invokes like it's, things like that. But especially the Bible, like now he's in the real. You can invoke like you know different kinds of mysticism and myths and and ancient references, but now you're at the most ancient of the mall not really but yeah. in terms of like the 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 one that's used most often and that's the just it's just the fucking bible dude and, and it's weird because this is a guy who's cagey about the way exactly he believes in god like he gets very philosophical about what do you mean by believing in god i mean maybe he's straightened that out a little bit but i don't right. know I, I feel like it is it's just um it's uh it's a tool for him so because he's so just because he seems to be in pain personally, um, yeah. that is why that is why Antifa exists. Like to Nomi's point, I mean, it's just re like he is having difficulty. I don't understand what's going on with him, but he's crying a lot publicly, and that's uh, because all of these bad things that are happening Kane, to me. Cain was not <laughs> recognized by God for his sacrifices, as is true too with me. I feel like able when I'm not able to go on Joe Rogan. <laughs> no one I understands <laughs> the pain, the trouble I've seen. No one can understand how hard it is to be me. Why don't people like get how, that women are of my rib? He, he asked you as a, psycho a clinical psychologist, not as like a th theologian. Oh, uh, clinically, right. clinically. Uh, someone, uh, a couple of people wrote in, um, has this dude ever owned a cat in terms of like wanting to kill for fun? <laughs> well, I'm not a veterinarian. This was exactly don't get me started. what made me cry. The idea that people don't appreciate my ability to clinically assess the psychology of hundreds, if not thousands of people I've never met. <sighs> and... They're mad at God, I can tell, from just the look on their faces and the way they wear their pants. Yeah, they're, they're all in black, because uh, that's, that's the devil's side. But the key to understanding 
not only Antifa or really anyone else, is how unappreciated and unrewarded I am. <laughs> <laughs> that is the way you gain enlightenment, is to understand <laughs> how is Jordan being negged or completely dissed in this situation? Why can't life just be a guitar riff? Yeah. And eating lots of meat. There's also this aspect like he suddenly got super religious and, and Antifa is, of course, Soros funded. So I'm curious, like, first off, is the evangelical movement even strong in Canada? And is it even about Canada? I don't know. But no, he's more he's he's, he's transcended like, to everybody. Exactly. Politics. Yeah, he's I like, have traveled with a Jew <laughs> on my tour. Oh, man. But was never given the recognition that I deserved <laughs> for that act. Just one more example of how the Lord has forsaken me. I can't wait till somebody asks him about Dave's family additions because Dave cited Jordan Peterson in that tour as Jordan Peterson saying, you know, a lot of people don't become a full human until you have uh, uh, had a child. And Dave Rubin's like, oh, I guess I need to have a child then. And uh, so, pretty but much did Peterson, you sire the child? That's not what I was talking about. No, I was not saying no, no. Oh, you've made a mess of this. No, Dave. Dave. Matt, is it Lutheranism or Calvinism where, like, the, the which I this has all left my brain, but in terms of like sects of Christianity that perceive human beings as like impure and constantly repenting for it. Which Christianity? I feel is like that? that's Calvinism. I yeah. Calvinism. I think that's Calvinism, yeah. right? Yeah, Puritan Protestantism. Yeah. Yeah. Doubling so. down wants to know: Is it okay to mock men for crying in public, or is that toxic masculinity? It is okay to mock anybody who is crying because they are talking about how the story of how Cain did not get enough appreciation from the Lord. I mean. That's what it is. Like I like like I have no problem with men crying in public. No. Uh, it, it, oh, I the, thought that's what we were good talking about. This because it was just showing yeah, weakness. Yeah, right, right. You we, are promoting toxic masculinity because you're saying it's not okay for me to cry in a ball of self pity as I reflect on the insanity of Antifa. Man, it's form and content. Um. I, like I, I'm assuming the I am or is uh, pissed about my take that. Uh, who knows of uh, Will Smith performing toxic who masculinity? Know, who knows? Hey, whatever. Get over Which it. Seems pretty freaking obvious, um, but whatever. If you are uncomfortable board. with that, maybe take a minute. Just take a minute and meditate on yourself just for a second. Atrum says, I honestly feel bad for JP that sadness seems genuine. Anyone who's ever been in a social situation holding back sadness from something outside the situation is someone who is trapped in their own head. I wonder what demons he's fighting with other than the benzos. I think it's different. Yeah, I, I think it's like he, he's he been conditioned to basically uh, correlate going to that emotional state with wrecking in lots of attention. Exactly. And, and I yeah. think you can't like separate that incentive from that, even if it is like semi genuine, because like he feels he feels it deep down. Like that doesn't mean it's sort of true or whatever you want to call. I've met it. I have no that. empathy. I yeah. I will say I know some some a person like this who like gets themselves so worked up in what they're discussing where it's really just an extension of like their own uh, narcissism Emma, I'm and they sitting start to right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always about you sam okay uh, it's like you're talking be like i'm not even here i need mean, to tell you this is your intervention it? right like you little beta bitch appreciated <laughs> like like the lord has forsaken me <laughs> Um, this is your intervention, Sam. This is it. Yeah. I know, we had to hook you in with Jordan Peterson because we knew that would get you to sit down and, and be open. But mm. Jordan Peterson is just like quickly becoming into like Laura Loomer at this point. Yes. That's my point, right? Like, I mean, he is. Oh, well, OK. We got OK. Madison yeah, here we go. Cawthorn up next. Um, I usually I usually oh, hate man. doing Madison Cawthorn because he is so like openly 
obviously seeking attention with every breath he takes and it's just like it's not even i don't worthwhile um sometimes but this is interesting at least 